So welcome to the revision video for IGCC Physics. This is just one whole topic. There are some more videos which are individual subsections, but this is for if you finish the entire topic. So there are eight videos in the series. If you like and enjoy, please subscribe. So this is a intro to IGCC density, which is unit of work 5B. So key maths, we've got the density of an object is a ratio of how much volume a mass takes up and the units of density rho are kilograms per meter cubed or kilograms per centimeter cubed. So often in chemistry they use kilograms per centimeter cubed, but physics we tend to go for meter cubed. And so density is mass over volume. We should be able to work out the volumes of objects such as a right cylinder, um, a cube, a sphere would actually be given to you but it's pretty obvious to top two what they are, but you should know them, be able to use them for objects. A sphere you'd like so to get given. You should be able to convert centimeters cubes to meters cubed. Now the easy way I always think is to imagine that one centimeter is 0 0.01 meters. If I cube that, I get 0 0.01 times 0 0.01 times 0 0.1, which is one times 10 to the minus six meters cubed for every centimeter cubed. And all you do is you remove the centimeter cube from your equation and you plop that in, and that converts it. It's as simple as that. Um, density of an object then, which varies a lot, means that things will either sink or float in another liquid when they feel heavier or lighter, when compared to, an, to the same size object. So you should be able to work out density of different objects, metals or woods or plastics, that kind of thing. Now there is um, a requirement that you should understand how to do or find the density of an irregular object, which is very similar to a regular one, what I do, I weigh the object with a set of scales in mass, um, in kilograms or grams. Um, I fill the can and water dribbles out. So this is a Eureka can, often called, or a density can. So the water that dribbles out and is captured in the measuring cylinder is the volume of water. I work out the density by doing density is mass over volume. I ensure the units are consistent with the variables I put in. So that's a really simple method for finding the density of a irregular object. If it was regular, I could just put it on the scales and measure it with a ruler, but you could use that for either method. So you should be familiar with that. So there we go. So that's a density IGCC topic done. Okay, so this is a quick introduction into IGCC physics 5B pressure. So what have we got in this topic? Well, pressure in a fluid causes a force normal at right angles to any surface. The pressure at the surface of a fluid can be calculated using the equation force in newtons over area in meter squared gives you pressure in pascals. So if the area is in meter squared and the force is in newton, then it is measured in pascals, PA, capital P, little a, or pascals. If it's newtons per centimeter squared, you can't do it like that. You'd have to convert. You can leave an answer in, in centimeter squared. That's fine, but it's not pascals. Um, the pressure due to a column of liquid can be calculated using the equation pressure is the height of the column in meters times the density of the liquid times gravity. Now, personally, I would always write that if I go over here to rho g h because it's much easier to remember or rho g delta h, the change in height. So that's one of the other key formulas. Um, if you go deeper into a fluid, the mass, the volume, the density of the liquid above you causes pressure to increase and air bubbles will take up less room at a larger depth. You can calculate the pressure difference by using the equation twice and subtracting. So you can see the picture here. If I'm at different heights, when I change my height, I've got to change the difference to see the change in pressure. So there'll be a pressure at one height and a pressure at the second height. Um, floating objects has greater pressure on the bottom side, which is called up thrust. So that causes it to rise. Um, an object's density in comparison to a fluid causes floating or sinking. So density differences we need to look at. Um, a fluid is incompressible. So think about like brake fluid as an idea. So when we have a hydraulic system, the pressure in a fluid is the same everywhere, which means that a piston can transfer force to a larger piston and magnify its effect. So for example, this scenario here, we've got a very small piston and a large piston and the pressure in the fluid, because the fluid is incompressible, um, we use this equation of the force in part one. So pushing 15 newtons over area one, which is this area. So force over area will equal the new force over the new area. Well, if I've reduced um, or increased my area, I will change my force. And so what happens in this case, we can magnify the force. Like we said, the, the upshot of it is so 
Although this piston moves a large distance, this piston moves a small distance. So the work done is still the same, force times distance, which is kind of clever. Pressure then in a gas that comes into it as well is due to the number of and speeds of collision of the molecules in a gas. So the pressure in the atmosphere drops as you go higher, uh, where the less molecules and the temperature drops, so they're not going as fast. Um, you also need to think about situations where there are high and low pressure. So we have like low pressure for an elephant, a needle, sort of in a, in a nettle. Sting would be very high pressure. Skates, they melt the ice underneath their high pressure. Feet of a swan, low pressure. High heels, high pressure. And then you've got the little trip there with the big wheels, so low pressure. So there you go. That's the topic we call pressure 5B. So this is topic 5C, part one, change of state and internal energy uh, for the IGCC syllabus. So what have we got here? So we've got some special units. So we've already talked about Pascals. So we're looking at um, one Newton per meter squared is one Pascal. Um, you should be familiar with that. We've got the Kelvin scale. So it's a temperature scale based on the motion of particles. So minus 273 degrees C is naught Kelvin. It's much more useful to physics than just having the standard 0 to 100 Celsius scale, which is based on the boiling point of water and the melting point of water. So this one is when all the particles will stop moving. So then we can actually make our graphs make a little bit more sense. So you've got to start thinking about this and be careful in calculations. Um, you should be able to understand the difference between a solid, a liquid, a gas, their change of state ideas. So melting, freezing, sublimation, condensation, boiling be able to explain what happens in condensing and freezing. So gas to liquid, particles get closer, they stay random, they start moving quickly in all directions, can only move around each other. That would be making a solid um, or, or making a gas, isn't it? Is the idea of the particles changing. So liquid to solid, stay close together, random to regular, start moving around each other and only vibrate on a spot. So it depends on which, which way you're going with what's happening. You've got to be able to explain it. Um, Specifically, you should be able to talk about the change of state graphs. So you're looking at how things are melting and heating up and the particles move faster. So this example graph would be, so B to C, particles move faster as temperature increases, the kinetic energy store goes up. Whereas this sort of part where it's A to B or it could be C and further on, this one in this case is going from a solid to a liquid. And it, the temperature's steady. So the difference is the thermal energy store goes into breaking the bonds between the molecules when that happens there is an increase in our internal energy without increasing the temperature so it's a difference really between potential energy and bonding changes to kinetic energy where the actual temperature goes up you've got about to explain it um we're about to talk about condensation evaporation so condensation when the particles don't have enough energy to remain as separate particles so they coalesce they condense they come together that's if a gas is called down Evaporation, though, particles in a liquid will always have different energies. So some are fast, some are medium, and some are quite slow. Um, and so what happens is, is if we have evaporation, the really fast particles leave and they leave what's left with a lower average kinetic energy store. So some of the energy is leaving. Of course, it increases if the temperature of the liquids increase. So the temperature difference between the liquid and the outside is, is more then the gradient is steeper. And if the surface of the liquid increased, so you could be taking a cup of tea, dropping it all over the desk, of course, we get more evaporation. And if air moves over the surface of the liquid as well, that will take some of the particles with it. So you should be familiar with evaporation, like I said, and condensation. So there is change of state, IGCC, GCC physics. Okay, so we're looking at the IGCC uh, introduction topic for 5C, part two, which is specific heat capacity. Um, so what have we got then? Well, specific heat capacity is the energy needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram of the substance by one degree. It changes depending on the substance due to the internal energy store absorbed in addition to the kinetic energy store absorbed. So it's really how does the sort of internal structure of that material work? So some materials, I'll just skip down past the equations, can, can take in a lot of energy. So water will take in 4,200 joules. Um, for every kilogram, for every degree it goes up. So it, it's actually quite good at absorbing that energy. That actually makes it very useful for heating um, in houses because when we've put a lot of energy in, the temperature of the actual uh, water has not gone up by too much, but when we pump it round to the radiators, it can deliver a lot of energy per kilogram move. 
Whereas other items, well, these, a lot of these are metals, but you won't want liquid metal floating around your system, but they're a lot lower. So they get hot very quickly. So like copper, wool, and lead, and that's why obviously the melting points are different as well of metals, but it, it, it just doesn't work as well. Now in some situations that's good, in some it's bad. You've got to know the definition. We need the formula. So Q or the change in energy is M mass C is the specific heat capacity times the change in temperature delta T, or you could do T2 take T1. You've got to be really careful with this equation because it's obviously got four variables, or you've obviously got this minus bit that has to be taken care of. Um, the other point is, at IGCC, you don't do latent heat of vaporization and fusion. So just to be careful, you can't do this over a phase change. And if you remember, we talked a bit before about when graphs are flat lying, this has to be where the temperature actually changes and you can't do it over a change in phase. And it's not in the spec to do it either. Practical wise, we need to know about a practical that uses a power pack. So we've got here a power pack, an ammeter to measure the current. We would have a voltmeter to measure the potential difference. And we'd have a timer, so we can do E equals VIT, and we can look at the work done heating up a block. Temperature goes up, work goes in. From that, we can work out the specific heat capacity because the work that's gone in, the energy from the power supply, Q, is the MC delta T. And you know what M is, and then you can work out C because you know what T is from the gradient of the graph, which is really cool. So that's one experiment. There are other experiments you can do. So you can either take a hot piece of metal, drop it into cooler water, and again, work out temperature difference, or you can take two fluids, i.e. water, at different temperatures, put them together, see what the new temperature is, and you can work out using equations the specific heat capacity. So there are three possible practicals to know about and a pretty neat equation as well. If you need to know any specific heat capacities, they will generally tell you in the questions, but they would expect you to know water at least, and that's similar for chemistry. So there you go, that's uh, 5C part two specific heat capacity. Okay, so this is the last section in solids, liquids, and gases, 5D. So we're looking at how an ideal gas behaves. So we need to think about gas molecules are very small compared to the volume of the gas moving in a random motion. They will exert a force and hence a pressure on the walls of the container. So pressure is force over area. Same formula from before. The faster the molecules are, the higher the pressure of the gas and the more frequent the collisions become. Uh, gas molecules behave randomly in all directions and speed and Brownian motion is evidence of it. And you can see a picture there of a molecule that's been moved about, buffeted, so it's soak, buffeted by these um, invisible molecules of gas. And we, so we know some of this from, from the motion of these particles. You can look under a microscope and see smoke particles doing that. Also, the molecules will collide elastically. It's not quite perfect, but we assume no energy loss and we assume that the intermolecular forces are pretty much zero with a very fast collision time. Okay, so there are kind of assumptions of how it happens. We've got to be able to convert between degrees C and Kelvin. So the Kelvin temperature takeaway 273 gives you degree C. You can see my little, little picture here to show you how to work it out. Um, we've got some of the key maths, so pressure, volume, temperature, um, situations one and two. So the idea is that there's a relationship at the start of a situation. So it could be you're pumping up um, using some gas that's in a foot pump and you're pumping into a football. So pressure one, temperature one are at the start. Afterwards, you've got pressure two, temperature two. So as long as you know one of the, um, sorry, two, three of the variables, you can work out the other missing variable. It's a four-way formula that you've got to learn. Um, you've also got to know the relationship for a pressure and volume of a fixed mass of a gas at constant temperature. And that one would be the same start situation. So pressure one times volume one would equal my new pressure two times volume two. So there are two key scenarios to learn. Um, we can also think about that particles have a kinetic energy store. Um, so they will all have different speeds, but they will, on average, have an average speed and an average pressure. So EK is a half mv squared. And we can show that T would be proportional to V squared. So as V goes up, T goes up, but it's not a linear relationship. So the hotter the gas is, the faster the particles travel. We should also know that as, um, if we think about, so we've got number of molecules and the speed of the molecules. So as the temperature goes up, so it's weird this graph, isn't it? So this is a gas at 100 Kelvin, 200 Kelvin, 300 Kelvin. So when we've got a hot gas, there's a much bigger spread of different speeds for the particles. 
or a lower spread or a lower spread. And so they're obviously more frequent at a lower temperature, but the actual speed is lower. So the mean temperature is lower. So it's a, it's a complex, tricky graph, that one, isn't it? We should know what Ball's law is, Charles law, pressure law. You get these crazy graphs that where PV is this funny curve. But if I plot P against 1 over V, I find that P is proportional to 1 over V. So we get a straight line graph. You should be able to do that. Um, Charles law. So another one, if we have volume and temperature, or we could also do pressure law, pressure and temperature. If we reduce the temperature for both these scenarios, our graph will extrapolate back to absolute zero and it predicts our thermodynamic scale, which is this Kelvin scale. So they're two really important experiments. They generally don't talk about the Charles law as much, but you should have an idea of what it is. And it's, it's like I said, it's very similar. It's a concept of the pressure or the volume of the two of the gases drops. And as it drops, it's because the temperature drops and that tracks back to absolute zero. So there you go. That's 5D. That's it. Solids of and gases, fried juice, is done.